Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and welcome to the next part of our GTM tutorial. In this video, I want to talk about the value proposition behind Google Tag Manager. Now, you've probably heard about Google Tag Manager, or at least had enough interest to check out this video and to check out resources online, but you might be having trouble proving to your organization that GTM is worth the time, the effort, and the resources required. And so what I've done to help you with that journey and that mission to convince your organization that GTM is worthwhile is I've put together a list of items that you can go through with your team to determine if Google Tag Manager is the right fit for you. And the chances are that it is the right solution for you if you want to do any type of tag management. So check out this video and the accompanying blog post to really get a grip on how we think Google Tag Manager can be a really great value for you and for your organization. So let's get into our Google Tag Manager tutorial. Let's talk about the value proposition of tag management in Google Tag Manager. So what is the value of moving to a tag management system, particularly Google Tag Manager? Number one, you have more control over your marketing measurement. Instead of dreaming up a marketing campaign and then waiting six months to deploy it because you need to get the tracking on your website, you can get this up and running pretty much right away using Google Tag Manager. Number two, it's way easier to deploy your tags when you're ready to go. And this is because Google Tag Manager has built-in tag templates, as well as the fact that you can create any kind of custom JavaScript or image pixel you want to put them onto your website. Number three, it's a rules-based system for deciding which tags fire where on your website. So instead of having to write custom code or a bunch of if statements or a bunch of different regular expressions in order to decide where these things show up, you control where these things fire based on the logic you set up in the Google Tag Manager interface. Number four, clean execution of scripts and minimal code needed because you're using tag templates. So this is an important distinction to make and that is that when you're using tag templates, basically the vendor who creates the tag and who sends it over to Google has verified that it works and Google has verified that it works and so they're not asking you to add code to your website they're asking you to put your account ID into a tag template and all you need to do is tell them when that tag template should go live and you are good to go it's a clean execution of scripts and you don't really need to understand code in order to make it work in most cases number five you have the ability to document what each tag does in an easy to understand language so all these tags that are out there, you can come up with your own naming convention and you can say exactly what it does in an easy to understand way that your whole company can understand. Number six, you're gonna experience fewer errors and risk through the GTM governance system. So Google Tag Manager has a built-in system that doesn't allow you to publish code that's gonna give you a JavaScript error, for example. Also, since you're using tag templates in most cases, they're gonna be verified as well. So Google Tag Manager is not gonna let you push through these things that are gonna be risky or that are gonna happen there. And not only that, but the governance system makes it so that only certain people can publish your containers. So even if somebody's adding tags and they don't know what they're doing, you can make it so that IT are the only ones who can actually publish the container live onto the internet. Number seven, Google has a built-in syntax error prevention system. And that works out well because this way you're not gonna make errors based on syntax. Some of the common errors that we don't really notice when we're writing code, especially if we're not in a code editor that highlights our errors or our syntax problems, Google Tag Manager won't let those things go through either. Number eight, dynamic values can be inserted into tags with data layer variables. And as you can imagine, this is a lot of words, but it works out really well. You can create any value you want to from your website, push it into Google Tag Manager, and then you can push it into your tags, any tag you want to, using these things called data layer variables. Number nine, built-in tag templates that cover the most modern marketing systems. And so here's a preview of just a few of the tag templates you can utilize. And we're going through this pretty fast, but as you can see here, some of the major platforms that are out there in the marketing landscape are things you can install in Google Tag Manager, simply clicking on the button, saying I wanna install this on all pages, and then telling them which account ID you have with that platform. It's as easy as that. Number 10, there's a growing list of triggers that allow you to track in-page events without code. So you can track things that happen within your pages without code using these triggers. So for example, there's a YouTube trigger, there's a scroll tracking trigger, there's even a trigger for tracking interaction with your web forms. Now these are triggers that used to require code to make them work, and now Google built them into their product in Google Tag Manager, and you can do it without code, and it works really, really well. 
Number 11, you have the ability to fire triggers based on any element of your website's HTML and CSS. So you can say if this button gets clicked on and this button has a certain CSS class, then that's going to fire a trigger within Google Tag Manager. Number 12, you have access control rights to prevent errant publishing of tags. This is where you can only give administrator publishing access to certain people that you trust, and you can do it right within GTM. Number 13, a comprehensive debugging system and container preview for your debugging. So you can debug everything and then also you can preview it for debugging purposes to make sure that it's going to work properly well before you publish anything onto the live internet. Number 14, you can add exceptions to your triggers to prevent firing during certain conditions. So if this happens, don't do that. Number 15, strong development support from Google to make continuous product improvements. The Google development team behind GTM, behind Google Tag Manager, is tremendous. They are really active, they are involved, and they are constantly trying to make this product better, and they listen to the marketplace. So when somebody says, hey, Google, can you do this in the product? They're going to find out a way to do it, and they're going to prioritize it, and they're going to develop it very rapidly. And that's the best part about GTM, is that it's always being improved upon continuously, constantly, and it always is improvements for the better. Number 16, in addition to the Google team, there's a strong development community and they even open source their resources. So if somebody comes up with a cool tracking script for tracking something, they usually put that out there on the web so anybody can use it and use it to their advantage. And that's really cool because most people who want to use Google Tag Manager are not people who are going to be really in depth with the code, but they're really more marketers who are looking to track more of their marketing activities. And so this development community makes that easier and easier because they've open sourced a lot of the coding pieces of it. Number 17, a comprehensive API for developers to connect to GTM at scale. So there's many applications that are built on top of Google Tag Manager using an API that developers can use to build on top of GTM. Number 18, there's an asynchronous code base and the ability to wait for your page to load before firing triggers. So if you're worried about page speed and GTM slowing you down, you don't need to be worried because you have controls within GTM to make sure that they're not wasting your time and wasting the time of your users. Number 19, real-time feedback allows you to test tags and receive immediate verification that they're working. Using the preview mode in GTM, you can see that things are working immediately and then you can make your adjustments and then you can verify that they're working well before you publish it onto the live internet to your live visitors. Number 20, there's a version control system and the ability to roll back your changes. So if one of the changes you made broke your website, you can simply click on the revert button and you can revert back to a previous version and then go back and fix the problems you had during the version that wasn't working properly. Number 21, there's an open naming system allowing you to give tags, triggers, and variables deeper meaning. Number 22, you can store similar elements in folders for ease of organization. So if you're using the same trigger over and over again, or if they're very similar, but you don't want them to show up all the time, you can organize them in folders, and it makes it much easier to find stuff once you have them in an organizational system. Number 23, you can even do codeless insertion of GTM onto websites using CMS plugins. So I do this through my WordPress plugin that I use, and there's other ones that are built in for other content management systems. So there's a chance that you can get Google Tag Manager on your site using plugins and never actually put code on your website, not even have to rely on developers other than to install the plugin and make sure that it's working on your website. Number 24, you can import and export containers easily between GTM accounts. So if you found something that you like in one account, you can hit export and you can import it into a new account and you can bring standardization and streamlining across all your websites that use GTM. Number 25, there's a change history report to see who has made changes to your account. Number 26, there's multiple workspaces for teams to work independently of each other and then bring them back together in the end when you publish. So there's all kinds of modern version control and workspaces where you're not stepping on each other's toes and then you come together in the end and you publish your changes onto the live website and everybody gets what they want and what they're looking for as a result of these workspaces. And finally, number 27, Simo Ahava. So we hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did enjoy it, leave a comment with your biggest GTM question that you have for us. We're going to take a look at all the questions you have from the community and we are going to try to answer them in future videos. We are going to try to up our content game 
when it comes to Google Tag Manager. So if you appreciate this tutorial, make sure you leave a comment with your biggest GTM question. And if you wanna see that GTM migration guide, make sure you leave a comment there as well. Mm -hmm.